Today, we're gonna to talk about gluten. Many people are realizing that they feel better going gluten-free, and you don't have to have celiac disease to benefit from going gluten-free either. But going gluten-free can be trickier than you might think. So I'm gonna give you a list of things to watch out for so you don't get accidentally gluten-bombed, as I call it. Personally, I have high anti-gliadin antibodies. What this means is that I have a high amount of antibodies towards gliadin, which is the storage component of gluten. So I've been fully gluten-free for about a decade, but I have accidentally eaten gluten on a few occasions when I've been out at restaurants. And it feels like a bomb went off in my body, which is why I call it gluten bombed. I end up with migraines and pain for days on end. So how can we avoid being gluten bombed? First, the most important thing you need to understand is that even a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of gluten can cause the same reactions if you had had a whole bite or a whole bunch of gluten. This is really hard for people to wrap their brains around at first, but once they experience it for themselves, they finally believe me. I'd love to save you the pain, however, of needing to be gluten-free and accidentally eating a little bit of gluten and ending up with all of the negative symptoms that come with it. So hear me on this one, even a tiny amount can cause symptoms. Dr. Tom O'Brien is an expert in the field of gluten and he states that the eighth of the size of your thumbnail can trigger a gluten reaction. So just think about that when you're eating out, think about how careful you need to be to avoid an eighth of a thumbnail, that is pretty small. And that's why this is so tricky. And the reactions that you might get from gluten could be totally different from the reactions that I get. Everyone's body is different and the systemic reaction that can occur is different in everyone. Some people have strict GI symptoms, gas, pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Some people have joint pain and achiness, muscle pain. Some people have fatigue, nausea. Personally, I tend to go to migraines, which is super fun. Because it only takes a really small amount to cause damage, cross-contamination is really important. And unfortunately, most restaurants are terrible about cross-contamination. They will tell you a dish is gluten-free, but then they're going to cook it in a pan that had gluten or cut it on a cutting board that had gluten or fry it in a deep fryer where they just fried something with gluten. And so through all of that, you're getting cross-contamination again and again and again. That could potentially add up to that eighth of a thumbnail that's going to cause some damage. In fact, a recent study showed that up to 53% of foods that were labeled as gluten-free actually contained gluten in them. So what do you do about it? You're gonna to talk to your waiter. You're gonna make sure that they understand what cross-contamination is and how it can still impact you so that they can relay that message to the kitchen to make sure that the kitchen is really intentional about avoiding cross-contamination in whatever dish you order. Now, in the study that I just referenced, the biggest offender of everything they tested was pizza. So pizza might not be the best choice for you when you're eating out. That might be something that you wanna make within your own home and make sure that you're taking care to avoid cross-contamination for yourself. Speaking of home, keeping your entire home gluten-free is going to make avoiding cross-contamination so much easier. If you don't have gluten in your home, there's nothing to worry about with cross-contamination in your toaster or your cutting boards or your knives. So I try to make a lot of my food from scratch so that I can avoid being accidentally gluten bombed and don't have to worry about cross-contamination at restaurants and things like that. My entire house is gluten-free, so for me, that's a fairly simple task. But if I am going to eat out or get takeout or eat something that might potentially have gluten, I always take Wheat Rescue. So Wheat Rescue is a really specific type of enzyme blend that can actually break down those gluten gliadin molecules. If you actually look at gluten under a microscope, it's this tangled mess of molecules, which is why it can wreak so much havoc. It's really hard for your body to break it down, and it's really hard for a regular digestive enzyme to break it down as well. So taking something like a wheat rescue that's specifically designed to be able to break down those tangled molecules can help unwind that before it hits your GI tract and can potentially trigger some of those symptoms that you might feel from being accidentally gluten bombed. So if you wanna try Wheat Rescue for yourself, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. I've had several clients start taking it and they've noticed that they don't have any of those negative side effects that they used to feel from going out to restaurants 
and getting some of that accidental cross-contamination. I myself have seen really dramatic benefits of taking Wheat Rescue whenever I eat out. So I try really, really hard to never leave home without it if I am gonna go out to eat. So the next thing that you are going to want to start doing is reading nutrition labels. Now, this is something that you should be doing anyway. It's really important to know what you're eating and what is in your food. But if you haven't gotten in the habit already, now would be a really great time to start. Anything that you buy, you're gonna flip it over and just check out that nutrition label. Now, luckily wheat is in one of the top allergens. So therefore, anything that has wheat in it is required by the FDA to be labeled as may contain wheat. So it's really easy to kind of just screen for that label. If it says that, you're gonna put it back on the shelf. Now, keep in mind that if you're buying something that's prepackaged and processed, you're taking a risk. Because like I said before, in that study, they were testing foods from the grocery store and from restaurants that were labeled as gluten-free and they still contained gluten. So even though it doesn't have wheat on the nutrition label, you're still taking a risk. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe have that wheat rescue on hand, or maybe just don't buy that and choose a different product instead. Now, some products are gonna be labeled celiac friendly. Those have been tested and shown to have no gluten in them. So when you're at the grocery store and you're trying to make a choice, anything that says celiac friendly is going to be your best choice in avoiding gluten. The next best choice after that would be to make sure you find something that doesn't say may contain wheat in it. And then of course, another really great choice, don't buy processed foods and make it yourself. And it, then you're ensured that it's gonna be really healthy, nutritious, good for you, and gluten-free. So there you have it, some quick and easy tips for avoiding gluten. First, you're gonna make sure you talk to your waiter when you eat out. Then you're going to make sure that you read nutrition labels for anything that you buy. I also highly recommend having wheat rescue on hand. And then of course, there's the option of just making the food fresh yourself and having a gluten-free home. If you can do all of those things, you'll be well on your way to safely accomplishing going gluten-free. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss any new videos when they come out on Tuesdays and Thursdays.